fashion their deal with the mastermind and the use of the God they look alike in other words. Was the, and I, I pulled it from John chapter 15 where Jesus said, you're no longer a servant but a friend. I call you friends uh, because whatever the Father has revealed uh, to me, I've made known to you and the servant is not privileged to that. And I, I said that how we got the master is because when uh, Jesus changed their mental picture, and I think I have it up there, I left it up there. That statement, friend, is an elevation statement. It's a promotion. In other words, you're no longer a servant. Don't see yourself as beneath me. So he actually promoted or elevated them thinking about themselves to really say that you are, you are also a son of God or a child of God. You are my partner or co-labor or joint heir. That's a spirit of equality. And so from there, I, if I were to say it, Lord to Lord, that will shock the church. So I use the terminology master to master because he is, in, in, is in our minds, the master. But if he elevate us to, to be equal with him, then that would make us who he is, son of God, master, ruler, so forth and so on. And yet I do believe that that's what Jesus was doing to change the way in which we think about ourselves. And, and, and we have some, uh, some information to show that, that led me to that mental health here. Self-image, concept, esteem refers to your mental picture of, of yourself, ourselves, which he changed that mental picture by saying you don't see yourself as a servant, but as a ruler, an owner, a son of God, or a master, which he's a master when we get that and that the mental picture will also determine how we evaluate our own worth, significance, uh, competence, and significance. Jesus changed the disciples' mental picture, in other words, of themselves. That a service mentality versus a ruler, owner, a master mentality are two distinctly different function, uh, thought patterns in the human brain. Servant thinks one way, master, ruler, owner thinks another way. The brain operates, this is, this can be proven. This is, is proven, this, this data to substantiate that. And we know from experience. And the mind functions differently depending on which concept is embraced. And in conclusion, no successful person ever achieved anything of greatness with a worthless view of themselves. My Lord. So the mental health is having the right mindset getting it right, so he changed their mindset. All right, I've taught this before, and I'll always go back and revisit things and connect it since this is in there, but I always add to it and bring it out another way. So I want to deal with, since we last week was the mastermind, we want to deal with the day is saved in the mind. Put your hand up there and say, I want, I want God to save me here. Like he saved me here. We ask for God to anoint us, but we'll never specifically say, anoint my mind so that I can think right, function right. Because you can be saved as I don't know what in your heart and crazy as I don't know what in your thinking or mind. We see that every day. Saved people can do some insane stuff. So it's not a problem with your salvation. It's not even a problem with your spirit. It's just a problem here, that if we can straighten this out here. So, so Jesus dealt with that right there with the disciples. It wasn't their salvation he was dealing with. It was how they thought, the thinking that they were dealing with. So I have a scripture to bring this out, but I saved that to pretty much the last scripture. So I'm going to go through what I have to go through, and then I'll give you my opening scripture at the end because it's going to make this statement make sense when I get to it. So let's go through a few things right quick. Back to the mental health thing, not illness, even though that's what I'm talking about too, but we're going to deal with the positive health. All right. Let me make some statements. You can work with me a little while here. Just follow my train of thought. It is within the mind that blindness, meaning spiritual and all of this, must be overcome. It's, it's, it's in the mind that blindness must be overcome. I'm going to 
want you to get, I want you to see. It's, it's, it's not in your heart. It's not in your spirit. It's in the mind that blindness must be overcome. Second Corinthians 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, hidden, it is veiled or hidden from those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. The attack from Satan is not so much against your spirit, it's against your mind. Really, there are a few cases, but for the most part, his attack, is, it, it may be launched against you, but it's not against you. When God gives you a revelation or a word or a vision, that's something that comes through the Spirit of God. And it, Satan can't attack the vision. He can't attack the revelation because that's the truth of God. That, that, that ain't nothing that can attack that. But, but, but when this truth reaches your cognitive, where it be, that's where the work of manifestation and steps are ordered by God to bring it, uh, 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 to bring it about, he attacks you here to make you second guess yourself if, that, if God really showed me that. So he ain't attacking the vision, he's attacking your thinking, your, your mindset. He's attacking it here. So he'll make us question if God even really revealed that to us. If, so the attack is really not against your spirit, it's against the thinking. Because at some point, whatever it is that God is giving the spirit has to be revealed to your thinking in order for manifestation to take place. It has to reach here. And, and the attack is here. So we have to correct that. Now, I'm not saying that there are times when your spirit may not be, may not be under attack. But the majority of the times, the attack is not against your spirit, it's against your, your thinking, the mind. So, so it leads me that, that it's in the mind that the blindness must be overcome. So the ancient uh, Egyptians, as they call them, just Egypt, they want to put them in ancient, like there's some kind of foreign people way back, were the first one to discover that, that wait a minute, this is not, even though they uh, still practice those different exorcism and rituals and things, they documented the first to discover that this illness, something, is a dysfunction in their thinking, in the mind, versus a supernatural force working, controlling them inside, in their spirit. That's power to us. That's don't make this because we're so far advanced today. But back, you talking about five thousand BC? That's powerful to be that innovative in thinking, to, uh, to understand that. And attribute that that something has to be fixed. But anyway, it gets it's it's, it's, it's if the gospel is hidden, it's, it's, it's hidden, it's veiled, it's prevented from those who are perishing, who the God of this world, this age, as they call it, has blinded. All right. Second thing, it is within the mind, and, and I'm using the word soul because it's incorporated in there, that the connection is made between the physical and the spiritual. I'm going to make this plain to you. It's within this here, this cognitive, this thinking, that the connection is made between the physical and the spiritual. I know it don't make a lot of sense, so let me bring some scripture. That which is spirit, Jesus said, is spirit. That which is flesh, is flesh. They don't interact directly because the spirit world is not going to just deal with the physical world in that way, and the physical world, flesh of the world, can't deal with the spiritual world. They, they're two separate entities and realities. So the only thing between the spiritual and the physical is the cognitive. So your soul is the mediator that connects the physical and the spiritual. And the soul is that part of you that can feel the emotions of the pain of this world and also feel and experience the joys of God's eternal power. Come on. Come on. The flesh don't necessarily feel that. The soul is what's interpreting and sending signals from the brain to the flesh. And so you can feel things in the physical and also feel things in the spiritual. That's a cognitive function. 
So that the Satan will attack your mind. He'll cut you off from experiencing the power of God and disconnect you from experiencing your own pain. All right. All right. Come on. Lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you. See, this is the stuff we've been teaching wrong. Get everybody on the right track. Everybody on the right track. <laughs> but don't you see? You feel me. So, so that soul, that mind, is, is that medium that touches both the physical and the spiritual. Now, we understand in, 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 in um, Presbyterian, different the ones, they teach dichotomy, soul and spirit, or uh, really one reality interconnected. Uh, there are arguments for both with teaching a lot of times, trichotomy. But I think the, the, the soul, is, you can look at it either way, because the soul, the mind, you put it that way, touches both. Experience, experience both equally. So it's that middle ground. You feel pain of life. One day, you feel the joy and the power of God's presence on the other hand. And the flesh can't touch the spirit and the spirit can't touch the flesh, but the soul in that middle experiences both as one reality. That's, that's the medium, that's the middle man. That's, and that's what Satan attacks. Often he will attack your body because he wants to get your mind in a destabilized state. Because it'll cause you here to question, wait a minute God, I know you're here, what's going on here? Why, why, why is this happening to my body? See, so, so it's right here that so he can attack one. Now he really can't attack the spirit man because that, that's not subject to attack. But he can attack the body to make you question God's power and presence in your mind. Or he just attack your, attack your mind and get you all discombobulated, as they call them, dysfunction, to where you almost want to walk away from God. That's a decision that you made here, because your spirit ain't in that. That's, see, that's, that's discouragement. Lift your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. So, 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 in that mind, for I'm using mind, soul, and, and all the different things that the connection is made between the, the, the both right here. This scripture for that is where, well, but I'm moving on. Uh, let me see where I am. Zingley said this. This is why I like what Zingley said. He said that what true faith is, is psychological health. In other words, until your mind gets healthy, you, you ain't walking in no faith. But when, you're, when your mind is stable and healthy, you're another person. Psychological health here. All right, scholar Miles, he was talking about the salvation of the soul, which he's talking about mind, all that too. Uh, salvation, period of soul, and he's speaking from the spirit soul uh, unit, unit as one. That he says the transformation, this is what he called the salvation of the soul of man. And he's talking about not just spirit being, because it's born again, but also right here in the mind. It's the transformation of a limited, inhibited, or distorted consciousness. In other words, until there's a transformation in your mind, the, 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 the salvation is, is, you may be saved, but it's an incomplete work. Come on. So the mind has to also be renewed. Otherwise, you're saved, but you're doing the same thing that you always did, Amen. which means you'll never get the results of your salvation. So along with the soul, the spirit being born again, which is only happening one time, the rest of your life is you are undergoing transformation in here to get this to act in harmony with the spirit. And if you can get your mind to line up with the spirit as one, the flesh is going to fall in line. You don't even have to focus on that. You just got to get your thinking. The, the, the cognitive and the spirit to function as one and the flesh is going to get in line. He said it's the transformation of, in other words, a distorted consciousness. Here's the scripture, Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world. There it is right there. But be what? Transformed how? Now, we're not talking about being born again, but being transformed. So the, so when I go back to last Sunday, Jesus changed how the disciples thought about themselves. 
So if we work it after we accept Christ as Savior and, and are born again, the rest of our life, we're working on trying to trans it, transform our life to look like him, to renew our thinking, to get it to line up because the problem is not with our spirit. It's, it's in the cognitive function. And the flesh is behaving because the, the mind is not in control. So Paul says here, be, see, now that scripture makes a whole lot of sense you know, based with, with uh, connected to what Scholomar said, be transformed how? By the renewing of, the, of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable and perfect will of God. I think I just got it here. Here's what Kant said. Well, like, this is powerful right here. This, this kind of brings it home for me. This is what Kant said, Emmanuel Kant. God is a necessary reality existing in, innately in the human mind. Listen, well, I know I'm dealing with some, some, some you know, philosophy and religion and all that, but these things help me to point my, make my case today, so we're going to get to some scriptures in just a minute. God is a necessary, but I have, to, I have to get you thinking a certain way. God is a necessary reality existing in the human mind. Now I put that there because I have room for it all. A necessary reality existing in the human mind, it goes on to say, and I put all up there, he, the, the, the concept of God in the human mind. It isn't about whether you accept it, but there's an innate, there's an innate concept of God existing in your thinking that is what gives the mind order. So without a concept of God, you wouldn't have no concept of self. And he says it's innately in you. Thank you, Lord. So it ain't, it's not even about whether or not you accept him or not. All men are born with a sense of some higher power or divinity or presence outside themselves. That's God in the mind. God said that's the only thing that keeps your mind organized and gives you order. Amen. Look what he goes on to say, though, yeah. in the human mind. Without which, if you don't have that concept of God, man is reduced to animalistic behavior. Yeah. No wonder our kids are acting a purely fool. Yeah. They're taking prayer out of the school. They don't have an understanding of God, so they are reverting back to animal behavior because the presence of God in your mind is what gives you a self, a sense of self. Without that, you'll rob people, murder people, kill people, all kinds of stuff. Don't respect people because you don't have that sense. They're killing the presence of God. Just a child talking about it gives him a sense of identity and self. So this was written, what is it, uh, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, I believe it was, 1800s somewhere. 1800s. We're in, we in, we in 2000, 200 years later. He wrote that then. He was right. We older would never do the things that these children are doing. But then we had prayer. We could talk about God in schools. It helped to shape your, 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 your feeling and understanding about yourself and others and other people. So now, Without God being in the school, no praying, no moment of solemnity and silence and honor and reverence. They don't reverence or respect nobody because the one that puts it there is not being given to them. And so they are, sometimes they get into fight. I hope they stop. They wish they would stop, but they don't. And they post fighting, and they are literally trying to kill themselves like wild animals fighting to death. Like they're trying to kill each other. What's wrong? Can't say it. God is the only thing that gives you that order of somethingness of somebody, and it's necessary. It's innate in the human mind. So if you if you crush that, then men will revert back to animal instinctive behavior. You will act like an animal because God is what separates the, the the concept of God. The idea of God separates you from everything else. That was 200 years ago. And now we're wondering why they're acting like they're acting. That was written 200 years ago. A little bit over. And he was right.
So, Second Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And that word sound actually translated and amplified is well balanced. Yes. And I'm not gonna, I've got too much of them already over, so well balanced. Come on, say that, well balanced. Well balanced. That's what the sound means. Well, well, and that's what we, we, we have to, I, we got to balance this thing. Mm -hmm. And you can be fanatical about anything, but it's got to be balanced. balanced. Yes. Okay, Ephesians, we're picking it up one. That the God of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Notice what he's dealing with. All of this is dealing with your mind. The spirit of wisdom and the revelation and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your what? Understanding. Being enlightened. So Paul here is saying, oh, I just, I'm, I'm, I, listen, I'm not just praying for your salvation because we, we know you accept Christ. You, okay, you say, but now I got, we got another problem here. We need God to give you wisdom and revelation and God to, and to, to open the eyes of your understanding so that you can be enlightened, that you may know um, what is the hope of his calling and, and the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints and so forth and so on. All of that's dealing with that right there. Ephesians, um, this is the Passion uh, Translation. I pray that, uh, I pray that the light of God will illuminate this is just another uh, uh, translation of it from the passions version i pray that the light of god will illuminate the eyes of your imagination understand flooding you with light light is another word for knowledge this is you know a metaphor for knowledge until look what it says now, look wait 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 see i made a statement about the soul the mind connecting both worlds Physical spirit. Okay. What he says that God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, your understanding, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of his call. That he will infiltrate your thinking, your mind, till you cognitively experience and comprehend. The full experience of his revelation to you. We got something God is revealing. But we ain't truly, truly in tune with what it is that God is trying to do with us. It hasn't gotten all the way home. So what, what uh, it went on to say in the commentary for that, that he called that God's wealth in the soul. So Paul is praying, I'm going to pray for you that not only that you be illuminated and, and, and lift up and inspired and, and, and the wisdom come, that, that all of this is God's wealth in your soul, in your thinking. So when Jesus changed their mental picture of themselves, he actually deposited great wealth into their spirit, into their cognitive great wealth of deposited because once you get get it who you really are once you really get it y'all can talk about the devil all you want there ain't nothing the devil can do when you really get a revelation as to who you are and experience the power and the presence of God stuff that yeah I might cry on the one hand but I, hey, oh Lord, help me hear Jesus. I saw in the video with yes. Brandon, she, she, she was like in a, a verge of crying, then all of a sudden she looked and smiled. Like I said, boy, she really crazy. You know, when you when you, you crying and smile at the same time. But hey, I, I told y'all, let's be borderline here cause I, because that was that what happened. You listen, you, you crying on the one hand because you're experiencing the hurt of things, but you also are in tune to the joy of God's presence and power. So I got a tear dropping here, but I'm walking with a smile over here. I got the devil even saying he is crazy as he can be because I know I'm coming against him, but he's smiling, that's right. I can feel the pain of my situation, but I also can feel the presence and the power of God working on my situation, working on me. 
Hallelujah. Telling me everything going to be all right. Telling me to keep pushing and keep going forward. Telling me don't stop. Don't look back. Don't go in the towel. I'm like, I don't even know what direction I'm going. I just know that I'm not alone and God is with me. Hallelujah. So with one hand, I'm wiping the tear. But with the other hand, I'm giving God the praise. On the borderline for real. <laughs> Y'all better stay with me. They look, they talk about the borderline right now. <laughs> Lord help our children. <laughs> Joe, there is a spirit in me. And it is the breath of the Almighty that gives him understanding. Thank you. God and say, this is innately in us. And now, our kids are being taught. Or oh, they're trying, they ain't being taught. They're pulling it out. And then wonder why they're acting like fools. That's the only thing that gives us a concept here. So our mental health is still rests upon a working knowledge of who God is. Because that's going to help me to know who I am. And if you mess with that, you pervert my understanding of me. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man. So Peter says it this way. Therefore, my brethren, gird. That word gird actually means the same thing as to guard. G-U-A-R-D. He's saying, God, the lines, the loins of your mind. God, your mind. God, your mind. Another uh, philosopher, this word, theologian, I didn't put it up there, he says, uh, believe it or not, your mind is your greatest instrument of power. Because when they get your mind, they got you. It's your greatest instrument. Of, and that's the thing we leave in bone. Peter said, guard it at all costs, defend it, be sober, and I ain't going to translate every word, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Guard it at all costs. Don't let nobody mess with that. Don't take that for granted. Cover it. Pray over it. Anoint it. Protect it. At all costs. Because when they get that, they got you. Lord have mercy. Help you, Lord. Help you, Lord. Let me get back up to the future. My mind went back in the in the past. Lord have mercy. If it wasn't been, hadn't been for the Lord on my side, I'd be standing in the room, butting my head against the wall, looking all wise and unwise. But He kept my mind. Hallelujah. He kept my mind. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about my little dice. Yeah. He kept my mind. And no wonder the older saints back in the older church they used to say, they used to pray those things that, you know, keep our mind and stuff. We don't pray all that now, but they were like, you know, I think I woke up this morning and I had a mind to live right and to serve the Lord. He kept my mind. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, you protect it at all costs. 
Galatians 5 uh, deals with the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5. It deals with the fruit of the Spirit. And we cover all of those fruits. And, and, and I'm not going to give all of them, and just, just a few of them. But, it, but one of the fruits it calls is temperance, which is translated self-control. That's a fair translation, but that is so far from just what is in that word. But it's it's a because that's how we look at it as a as a, a stabilizing word to keep you balanced, and that is true to that. But I want to go a little bit deeper on that because I pulled out this word, and this is, gets to the heart of where I got it from. Say temperance. Yes. Okay. That's what I want to break that word down. There are two words I put both of them up here that that define temperance. Okay. I just want to give you. Definition, I got the words underlined. We ain't got to go through the pronunciation and all of that. I haven't looked it up, but it's not, it's not important. It, it, this word comes from two words. The first one is in fixed position. That's, that's where the stability and all. In place, time, or state, not a, not a state of being. So it, it's, it's, a, it's being fixed in a certain state of being or position in time. Something like that. That's that's one word. And then the second word, kratos, is vigor, dominion, and power. So this is where we kind of get self control. Self control. It, it it is getting to a place in a state of being to where you are planted and secure, oh. and nothing can move you. Self control don't portray that. But that's what the word shows. It's, it's, it's what it said in Psalm that we should be like a tree planted yes. by the rivers of water, who, who, who bears its fruit in its season, who leaves shall not wither, and whatever we do shall prosper. And the storms may run, with, with what will come, winds may blow, the flood may rise, but I'm, I'm, I'm securely planted and fixed what we wrote. I think a Jane Cleason uh, thing it was that wrote the song. No, was it Jane Poo? No, it was uh, uh, Douglas Miller. Make sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Well, here, what we said is self-control, but it's actually getting to a certain place in God and planting yourself and saying, I don't care what comes. I am, I'm, I'm planted here and there ain't nothing that can move me. No devil in hell can move me. No situations can move me. Nothing can change my mind. Nothing can shake me. Nothing can break me. I am, I'm, 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 I'm just tied up with this go all the way home, wrapped up, you know, in, 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 the, in, in the arms of Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm set here. I am planted. So when you get to a certain place of spirituality here, because it's a state of being, you secure yourself there, and you plant yourself there. Times will change, but I am unmovable. 